Okay, so we all know this. The fact is we are all looking for ways to save a few bucks. So today we are opening up the viewer emails back to answer some of your money questions. And joining us now is our money and business expert and author of Good Money Revolution, Derek Kenny. Derek, so good to see you on a Tuesday. Thank you, Morgan. Good to see you. All right, we're just going to get into some of these questions. We are starting with Sharon in Arlington, who wrote, I'm hearing a lot about a potential recession. I'm about 10 years away from retirement and worried about losing my job. What should I do to prepare? Well, the bottom line, Sharon, you're not alone. There's a lot of people with this same concern. Here's what I would tell you to do, just right off the top. Talk to your boss and tell this person, look, I'm worried about a recession, worried about losing my job. What's the likelihood that would happen? And the fact that you're asking that direct question to a person who could make that decision will likely let you keep your job because they feel more concerned and worried about you, but also it's gonna give you a good sense of what is the status of this company and should I start looking for a new job right now? Also, stash your cash. This is a good time to put off some of those unneeded expenses Build up your cash reserves in case you lose a job. It buys you time to not just jump for the first job, but pick the right job. All right. We're going to hear now from Brad in Trophy Club, whose email said, I owe $75,000 on my house. It has a 3% interest rate. I have enough money to pay it off. Should I? Brad, first of all, you're in a very enviable situation. Most <laughs> viewers would say, I will take Brad's spot any day. Here's the deal, though. With a 3% interest rate, that is gold, and current home rates are about 5 to 7%. So here's what I would ask you to think about. Does having debt keep you up at night? Does it cause you to worry, have anxiety? If so, go ahead and pay the house off because it's purely a psychological decision. If you want to make the purely financial move, you're probably going to make more money in the stock market this year, more than 3%. Better to not pay off the house if you can invest it you're likely then to make more money. Ideally, if the market continues going up, take those gains and then let the market pay off your house for you would be something to think about. All right, Derek, we know you're a money expert. We're about to see if you're also a bit of a relationship expert. This question's okay. a little bit of both. Melody in Dallas wrote, my husband is a big time spender and I'm the saver in the family. Honestly, it's causing some conflict in our marriage, which I don't like. Please give me some talking points to have with him. Wow, Melody, yeah, I go from financial advisor to marriage counselor right on the same show. Here's what I would tell you to do. This is very common where one person likes to spend, one person likes to save, and it does produce conflict. What you want to do, though, is reduce the anxiety in the room. And here's how to do that. Say, honey, I know we're on the same page. Let's come up with a plan together to achieve our financial goals. And what might happen is you might end up saving a bit less he might end up spending a bit less, and you meet in the middle to find common ground. But the bottom line is never attack and say, because of you, we're not doing well financially. You want to come across and say, hey, we're on the same team. Let's solve this together. And when you spend so much, it makes me feel like we're not providing for our family. That emotional connection can cause the other spouse to make a positive change. I feel like that's good advice even when you're not talking about money. So I feel like we got, we got a little double thing here. That's like just good relationship <laughs> advice. <laughs> Love it. All right, last question for you, Emery and Grand Prairie, who says, I lost quite a bit of money in the stock market last year. I feel like I should take more risks now to make up for what I lost. What would you do if you were me? I would not book a trip to Las Vegas. I'll put it that way and try to get back my, my losses. This is common again as well. People who lost money last year feel like they have to sort of double down to make back up for lost ground. And often what happens is you then lose everything and you make a, a financial crisis a financial permanent situation. So what I would suggest is only invest based on your risk tolerance today that you're comfortable losing now. Ideally, you want to make more money, but don't take excessive risk because you could really hemorrhage your situation and cause permanent financial ruin. It's simply not worth it. It's not what I would do since you're asking. As always, such great advice, Derek. Kenny, thank you. Money expert, marriage counselor. Okay. <laughs> We're grateful for your time. My pleasure. Thank you, Morgan. Great to be with you. We'll see you next time.